Welcome to the Arizona Mining Review. It's a product of the Arizona Geological Survey. I'm Mike Conway, and this is our 41st episode. It's the 26th of September. I'm in Hayden, Arizona, near the confluence of the Gila River and the San Pedro Rivers. And I'm in the office of Joe Wilhelm, plant manager here at Asarco's Hayden Smelter. And Joe has been at the smelter for 29 years and been plant manager for about nine years. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, the Hayden Smelter is one of three copper smelters operating in the United States at this point. You've been operating since 1912. I don't know if that's continuous, but it's been up and operational. Continuous, except for minors, economic situations. Excellent. World War II. And you guys can produce as much as 700,000 tons of copper annually. No, we produce about 300 million pounds of copper annually. We, we process about 740,000 tons of concentrates per year. Okay. Okay, very good. And right now the smelter is undergoing a $180 million retrofit to meet EPA standards. I gather to help keep the environment clean here in the, in the Winkleman Hayden area. Yeah, the, uh, the, the uh, money is somewhat arbitrable. I mean, right. we hope to be less than that. We could possibly be a little more, but that's the target number we're using. And uh, it's exclusively aimed at emissions reductions. Very good. There is no production or cost benefit. It'll actually be more expensive to operate due to the additional horsepower for ventilation. Sure. But uh, our goal is to increase our sulfur capture, which is our largest uh, right. contaminant, our pollutant, from about nine. Our sulfur capture will be improved from about 95% effective to about 99 plus percent effective. And how does that compare with other smelters across the world, U.S. and elsewhere? World class. Um, the, the average throughout the entire industry in the world is probably. Uh, less than 90, okay. maybe, maybe 90. Right. Uh, presently we're at 95, which is in, uh, you know, at the very best of the uh, smelters of our era. Sure. Like the ones that were built in the first part of that century and yeah. continue to exist today. Uh, not as good as the, the, the newer smelters or the more recently renovated smelters. Uh, they're already at 99%. Okay. But the very best anybody is, is in that range, 99.0 to 99.5. Mm -hmm. And how large a crew have you got working on this, and how long have you guys been at this, and when does it when does it take place? Well, we've been at it since 2009. That's okay. uh, approximately the time the new national air quality standards were revised for lead and, and sulfur dioxide. Sure. And we looked at both of them. We were in compliance with both of the old standards, borderline compliance with the newer standards. To this day, at this time right now, we're in compliance about 95 to 98 percent of the time with sure. the standards but we have these brief periods where we're out of compliance and that's okay. what this project addresses, how to eliminate those, those from our systems. Right. Um, in 2009, we uh, hoped to be done in 2013, but it's a long and arduous process yeah. to get an, a permit and, uh, and the associated uh, documents with it approved through the federal regulatory agencies, primarily EPA, mm -hmm. and in, in our case, DADEQ, Arizona Department of Environmental Quality in, in the state. And uh, that process took almost five years. Uh, it was ba it was really uh, from 2011 to the end of 2015. Okay. And once we got that, we uh, uh, approved the money and started helping for leather to get the project right. done. And we're still on that three-year time frame. We initially intended to start construction in 2010, finish in 2013. Now it's start constru construction in 2016 and finish in 2018. Okay. Our consent decree states that uh, by May of 2018, we will no longer use our old converters. All right. And by the end of 2018, we will have all three of the new converters in process. And are you still in production right now? Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Very good. We I have we have saw no curtailment. We're we're doing a parallel job. We're oh, running the plan on one train and building a new train. Very good. And you take most of your copper ore is coming out of the Ray and the Mission and the Silver Bell mines here in Arizona. Yes, uh, uh, we we have four concentrators in our company: two here, one at Hayden, one at Ray, two at Mission, and uh, all four of those feed our smelter. And we still have room for another ten to fifteen percent concentrate that we purchase from the outside market. Okay. And uh, the the you know the most of the customers are here in Arizona. People like uh, FMI or probably right. Capstone. Right. Um, uh, we also operate solvent extraction plants at both Ray and Silverbell. Okay. That's making copper out of you know, from oxide ore right. leaching right. process. And you have a sulfur dioxide acid plant here. You guys we produce. Do. Okay. That's the primary uh, 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 treatment system for our gases. Or we take all of our right. furnace gases from both converters and anodes, direct them to the acid plant where we produce approximately 2,000 tons of acid per day. Wow. 
That seems like a lot of acid. It is a lot of acid. I mean, it's it's 20 rail cars every day. And you, where do you ship that to? And how the majority it of it goes to the Ray Mine. Okay. Uh, probably uh, five to six hundred tons per day of it go to the Silver Bell Mine. And there's a small amount of it we sell to various customers. Our acid is such high quality due to mm -hmm. our furnace processes sure. that it's uh, considered food grade acid. Uh, it can be used oh. in various different industries, but they're all small tonnage users. Right. Right. Very good. And so, how many people is the smelter right now? How many folks do you guys employ, and how does that benefit well, the local economy here? And we employ about we employ about six hundred. Okay. And uh, you know they're scattered from uh, their homes are scattered from Tucson to the right. East Valley, with about probably forty percent of them living in within a thirty or forty mile radius. Sure. Uh, we also right now have almost five hundred contractors on hand, so we're providing a huge boost yeah, right. to the local economy just for kind of contractors. Yeah. Uh, the contractors are uh, a lot of them come from the uh, the reservation. A lot of them come from the union halls in Phoenix and Tucson, and then some of them are permanent employees with kind of contracting companies. Okay, very good. And this retrofit is good for you guys for the next 20 or 30 years? I mean, what do you anticipate going forward? Well, there's very little improvement left to be made. When yeah. you're getting 99 plus recovery, it, it's reverse exponential. You know, to get from 95 to 99 percent cost more than it did to get from, say, 85 to 95. Right. It, and it would cost more to get from 95.3 to 95.4 because it's so hard to capture. Yeah. You, uh, you know, you, you're talking about, at that point, very small amounts of SO2 in the PPM range mm -hmm. escaping your process. And to capture them, it, it, you, the only thing you can do is, is another hood and more ventilation. Right. So realistically, since the best uh, processes in the world are at the level we're at, we anticipate no future changes other than maintenance capital changes. It will still take new acid plants, new sure. oxygen plants, right. but there will be replacements, they're not right. a change. Yeah. Um, so you're set up for the next generation that we, we, like to, we like to say generation. What it really, I think, refers to is life of mine. Right. Uh, our mine has known reserves throughout the 2030s, and I believe further reserves beyond that probably. That's been my history in the industry, is, is uh, final mine closure dates move out. Right, by. right. The, 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 as you get bigger trucks, bigger shovels, better technology, what used to be waste now becomes ore. Exactly right. And you reprocess even some of your slag out We do. Here, is that correct? We, we uh, reprocess about 20% uh, of our slag right now. Okay. The 20% the, the, the has the highest copper content. Clean slag is 0.8 copper. Anything above 0.8, we like to look at reprocessing, and our cutoff point right now is about 1.25. Okay. But uh, that can change in the future. Sure. Uh, we yeah. we uh, have processed as much as 100% of our slag, but what we did is we stockpiled okay. and, and then treated in, in bulk quantities. So we, we do have, we, we're taking a strong look. The, the technology changes too. There are people sure. who now leach slag. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there are different technologies, and you know, every, every day technology gets better. And what happens to, you guys develop, you develop these, these copper plates, and they go off to Amarillo, and at that point, uh, well, we number one, we like to call them copper anodes. Okay. Uh, in the electrolytic process, you start with an anode and mm -hmm. you finish with a cathode. Okay. So what you do is you take your anode. We, we produce about uh, 1,200 of the anodes per day, each one weighing about 810 pounds. Wow. And uh, that's our final product. That's after smelting, converting, and uh, fire refining. Then mm -hmm. we cast into the anode shapes. We load those onto trucks and send them to Amarillo to our electrolytic refinery where they undergo the electrolytic process, which is basically, you know, they, they set starter cathode sheets and anodes sure. spaced intermittently into cells of, uh, of a weak acid solution, induce the current through them, they plate the copper from the anode re into solution and then mm -hmm. back onto the cathode with any impurities or precious metals staying in the sediments right. at the bottom of the cell. And that process produces cathode copper that is still not our final product. Our final product is rod. That's that's our okay. goal. Some cake, some cathode, but mostly rod. And we sell the rod to uh, various uh, people for motor wire, uh, extruding into shapes. Right. The cake is used uh, for other processes, like say jackets. People that want to melt bulk copper, or that sure. want to take it and shape it, drill it, machine it into a jacket, or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but rod is our real business. That, that's where we, that's where our customers. And it looks like the green economy isn't going to adversely impact copper at all. There's a lot of use for copper. More so. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, there's copper. Anything to do with 
producing electricity, be it from solar, wind, right. thermal, or normal generation, all involves copper. Yeah. Okay. And uh, copper is a wonderful metal. It's, it's the best conductor available, and it's recyclable, almost 100% recyclable. Okay. Well, we covered a bunch of things here. Is there anything that we missed that you would like to... Oh, like probably only just out. to touch briefly on, on, on the process, you know, the, the actual process. What we're doing is we have, presently, we have five copper converters, mm -hmm. and they're smaller, 13-foot diameter. We're replacing them with three 15-foot copper converters, 15-foot okay. diameter, that have about 1.5 times the capacity. Ergo, we can get by with three of them instead of five. Right. We, and right now, we blow two at a time. In the off-gas fire, we're only going to blow one of the converters in the new process, so the off-gas volume is less than blowing two, greater than blowing one, fits perfectly in our acid plant. Very good. And it also allows us to get stronger gas, which will need dilution, and we're going to recirculate our secondary ventilation, okay. that which escapes the, the primary ventilation, yeah. back to the acid plant. We pick that up from benchmarking. That's what they do in Europe at more successful uh, uh, sulfur okay. capture operations than ours, and we're, we're applying it here. Excellent. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're looking at the best in the world, and we're trying to copy what they do. Very good. Joe, thanks for being on the Arizona Mining Review. Pleasure.